like a bar when you're sitting in your fainting chair drinking pink rice. Am I the one you think about when you're sitting in your fainting chair drinking pink rice? Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to another episode of Maximilian Must Know. Got an interesting one for you today, and we're actually going to take a look at a fragrance service and review that service, and I'm going to let you know whether or not it's something I think you should be interested in. And the service is called Scent Trunk. Now, you might have heard of this service as they're making waves in the fragrance community, and Fragrance Bros did a video on them, so they reached out to me to, and, and basically asked if I wanted to do a video as well. I asked some questions, agreed to do it, let's get into it. The way this works is you go onto Scent Truck's website and they send you some fragrance samples in the mail. You can get three for $15 in a monthly plan, $20 for four cents in a seasonal plan, or three cents per month over a six month period for $84. So what you do basically is you go online, you answer a bunch of questions about scent qualities that you like or dislike, and about five days later, you're gonna get a package that has three cents in them based off your uh, specifications. So the three, first let's go over to the three they sent me off the profile I built. The first one is this one right there, and it's called Field Notes from Paris. The notes on Field Notes from Paris are African orange flower, cardamom and bergamot at the top, patchouli, cedar, tobacco flower, tobacco blossom, and cedar in the middle, tonka bean, vanilla, leather, and beeswax in the base. Now, if you're looking for this one retail, it's gonna cost you about $95. I think this is a okay scent. It's a little too usual for me, if that makes sense. I, I, it's certainly not extraordinary. Um, some people told me that, or I looked online, and some people said that this reminded them of Udin by Zerzhov. I'm very far away on that opinion. It's just a scent that's okay, but nothing special. I actually had the chance to buy this when Bell was shut, when Bendel was shutting down their fragrance department. The entire Anike, and this house is Anike, line was 60% off. I wound up buying, I think, 14 fragrances from Bendel, but I couldn't find one from the Anike collection that I liked. The second one they sent me is this large sample and you can see it's pretty good I guess it's about four or five ml and it's called Tabac Blanc and this is from a house called Roberta Andrand now 10 mil of this if you were to buy it through the actual site the you know their website uh, the, the perfumers website 10 ml of this goes for $19 notes on it are bitter orange fig at the top leather and spices in the middle cedar tonka cacao pod castorium and musk in the base I really thought I was gonna like this one I wound up really viscerally liking this one um, I I don't mind hard to take or animalic scents like Leather Oud by Dior, Alcott by Zerzhov, Cure by Mon Mona Oreo. I can do skanky, uh, but this one to me is very audacious. Uh, I feel like I don't get any fig or better orange in this, just everything is overwhelmed by that castorium. Um, I really like the castorium note, to be honest with you, in a lot of fragrances. I love it in Zoologist Beaver. Um, what else? I love it in Antius by Chanel. Um, oh, Ambrum by Histoire de Parfum, Nice 10. So I'm, I can definitely do Castorium. But to me, and I mean no disrespect to, to the house, this one smells like someone got Castorium, wanted to use it, wanted to dominate. And I think that uh, just putting Castorium very naked in a scent is sort of like putting a large slab of raw tuna on a plate. You know, on its own, you might look at it and be like, this isn't very appetizing, but if you accentuate it with vinegar, rice, some wasabi and ginger, everything comes together. And I think that's sort of what's missing from this one. It's really just a big dose of castorium with not much else supporting it. The third one that they sent me um, is this one. And this one, or I'm sorry, this one. And this one is called Midnight Leather by Note Fragrances. A 60 ml of that would retail for $74. The notes on that one are blood orange, coriander, and ginger at the top, juniper, gunflint, leather in the middle, tobacco, patchouli, coffee, and vetiver in the base. I have to be honest, you guys, this one's really good. Um, there's some really interesting things going on within it. I get cardamom. I don't actually see that in the notes, but I get that and sort of ginger and tobacco. It's well blended. It smells really good. It's a little too soft for my liking, but it's definitely something I'd come back to. Before we get into my likes and dislikes, let's go over the sort of presentation. You get your fragrances in a little box like this. It says Centruck. You open it up. 
and there's a little velvet pouch in there with your fragrances in it and some tester strips, which I think is really, um, really thoughtful of them. I love the box. And then you also get these cards that have your fragrances on them and you get your notes in the back, you get some information about it. They tell you the time of day you might wear it, how long it might last and what the sillage should be. So I think the presentation is A plus on this. I really like the way uh, the fragrances come. So what else do I like? Uh, it's a lot faster than I thought it would be. I like the fact also that they hit me with three pretty obscure scents. I always say, you know, rattle my cage. I, I'd always prefer like to smell something like Secretions Magnifique over Big Pol over Polo Big Pony any day of the week. Um, maybe not to wear, but definitely to smell. I like perfumers taking risks and being bold. I have lived and breathed fragrances for the past three years, and I only knew one of the ones that they sent me. So I think it's really cool that they could hit someone um, like me with something obscure. That's awesome. And it speaks really highly of their skills in bringing in real niche and indie brands. I also like the price. I think $15 for the sizes of the samples was, was pretty good and I give them an A plus for presentation. Let's talk about what I don't like. First and foremost, I don't like any of the scents that much. Um, I wouldn't buy bottles of these, but what I think is worse than that, and I wanna just preface this by saying, I'm a marketing director at one of the largest philanthropies in the world. So I'm picky and I see things probably a little bit differently than other people. Um, but I'm baffled by the fact that there's no way for me to rate scents that they sent me to help me, fi to help me finally tune my next package if I decided to order one. You can only really add or subtract notes um, that you like with like slider buttons. I love how Pandora and Netflix let you rate media to whittle down the choices that they offer. I think that's a huge miss. And I also think that they need to get someone to do a little bit better job on their on their matching. You know, I have about 500 fragrances, so I like a lot. Um, to not like any of the three that they they sent me is a little bit off-putting. And knowing that I wouldn't be able to further refine that would stop me from putting up more money if I were a subscriber to get another box. Because once you're in $30 territory, you can get nice size decants of high-end fragrances at that point, and this service sort of becomes moot. So I think they have to do a better job during the initial analysis and follow-up. We're almost a guru who is really passionate, almost as passionate as a sommelier might be at Danielle or 11 Madison Park. Um, could match better, you know? Uh, I would pay someone there just to match until people are happy, you know, really analyze the fragrances that they um, send in that they like on the questionnaire, look at all their likes and dislikes and really work on a perfect package and then keep tweaking it by getting feedback on the sense that they send you. You know, Apple's trying to do that with um, Apple Music. They're trying to do away with algorithms and hire people to make playlists who live and breathe music. And I think that Scent Truck would be really well served to do that. Um, to do that as well. The last thing I really didn't like was the incessant emails. I got one at least every day and sometimes two um, every day. And the firm that I work for paid for market research for multiple sessions um, where we brought in people that uh, that support the company customers and, and uh, you know had them in a room and we had a double mirror and so they couldn't see us and we heard really what they, they thought about our marketing and I think that from what I learned at least that one a day is far, far too much. Um, I think the optimum number for people who are already customers should be one or two at the most. You know, I actually welcomed the first couple emails, but then I realized they were coming every day. It turned me off. I would have shut them off, but I wanted to really see if they continue to come every day and they did. So I guess the real question is would I recommend this service to you? And the answer to that is yes and no. If you're watching my channel, you probably are really into fragrances. And at that point, you can research scents and I think spend that $15 a little bit wiser. If you're in a big city, I think this would be a huge waste because you can uh, spend a day at niche perfume shops and try a lot of fragrances for free. It becomes tough to swallow that $15 a month when nowadays $10 can get you Apple Music or unlimited streaming on Netflix. 
works. Now, if you're new to fragrance and want to broaden your horizons, this is a great way to do so. If you don't live near a place that sells into your niche, again, by all means, this is a really good service. And I predict, my prediction for Zen Truck is that they're going to do really well. They're going to get bigger and better. They're going to continue to make improvements and uh, add under the radar houses that make fragrance connoisseurs uh, happy to their lineup. Would I continue to use this if I had to pay? The only way I could see that, and I'm the wrong guy to ask probably because I have houses sending me samples all the time, um, and I gotta be honest, something a little bit rubs me the wrong way about them selling samples and then selling bottles as well. But based off what they sent me and the fact that I'm not confident in being able to tweak uh, subsequent packages, I would not use this service. Because if I had, uh, if I paid for this, I would have had three samples that I couldn't wear for $15. Now, tell me every month that you're gonna send me super premium scents, uh, and then maybe if it was 20 or $25, but I know I was getting Zerzhov, Amouage, Profum Aroma, um, that might be a different story. But $15 for three samples of fragrances that all retail for under $100, I don't, I don't like that much. Uh, I don't think that's a good deal, and I would not, I would not um, continue to to use this service unless I could make further modifications to my choices. Now, with that said, I want to be fair to Scent Truck. A lot of other people really like this service, and it's really easy to see why. They're fast. They bring out under the radar houses. Their customer service seems tremendous. They present the fragrances beautifully, and they do make trying new fragrances very convenient. I think I'm just a little too deep in the fragrance game for a service like this, but that doesn't mean that I won't uh, love them and the fragrances. That means that you won't you won't love them and the fragrances that they pick for you. I was asked to give an honest assessment, and really that's what I tried to do. I'd be happy to do a follow-up video and retract anything that I said that was incorrect, or if they do make further improvements down the line, I'd be happy to, to revisit. If they wanted to do a follow-up, I'd be happy to, to do another video. Because I would love a service like this to, to work and be awesome, and I love they're their doing something different with fragrance retail. But the bottom line is you could walk into any Sephora and get three samples for free without purchase um, you're really paying here for discovering scents that you normally wouldn't come across. And ultimately, you have to decide whether that's okay with you. It might be right for you. Um, I do think this type of service has a place. I just think it needs to be worked on quite a bit before it's a must-have for fragrance heads. The only other thing I want to say is that people here probably know I am... Um, I promote decantshop.com and uh, I, there's not a conflict of interest as far as I'm concerned. These are two different services. Decantshop.com, you pick the fragrances you want. Send Truck is picking them for you. So this this um, review is not at all influenced by my relationship with decantshop.com. So guys, you're gonna have to make the decision. Give it a try, $15, right? What's the worst that happened? You don't like the fragrances, you don't use it again, or you love them and you continue to use the service. Let me know what you think if, you've, if you have tried scent trunk let me know about your experience and we'll be back with more videos later this week guys you know what it is my name is maximilian and i must know thank you scent truck for the the sample pack. am i the one you think about when you're sitting in your fainting chair drinking pain credits and everybody